What's up guys, it is Manga Mongering here and today we have a new expansion called Call of the Grave. Um, it looks pretty lit if I do say so myself. And today with us is Redmaster. Say hi. Like I'm never here I before. mean like, yeah honestly like you're here like every other video. It's fine, it's totally fine. What are we doing today? Um, oh yeah, we're going over cards. Okay, yeah, so we're going over cards. Um, uh, the, what else are we gonna do? When there's a new card set, guy, we gotta review those cards. I know it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit. Okay, so here is the first card in the expansion, and it is called Fear, and it is a Warlock's card. Um, Fear. Yeah, it's. I mean, like, it's it's a card that came out. Um, it's not. It's not especially good. It could be useful against like stalwart people like um, Titan Watcher and Draymoth because knockback doesn't actually work against stalwart people, obviously. So, that is true. so this is a way to get those heavy units away from your castle um, if you're in trouble. But other than that, like it's kind of hard to use. Do you do, do you have anything to say on that? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean. Pretty much similar to the lines that you said. Overall, not super strong. I don't think people are going to take this in. It's more of a uh, like spell filler for those RNGs, from smuggling ring from Flux, all those kinds of things. And of course, there's a stalwart benefit if you are you know, trying to get something away. Sure, fear can work on a stalwart. But other than that, fear is really limited to how much you can get out of it. So yeah, that's yeah. Much all i got to say about that. Okay, here is our next card. It is called Reanimate. Um, it is a Vikings card. It's a spell, and it is more, it's towards undead. It's summon a random undead unit for each of your units, costing at least one gold that has died this turn. So you, so you can't spawn those uh, or spam those rats or zombies, folks. It, unfortunately. Exactly. It it is a little bit harder for uh, your units to die in order to get these undead units out. But honestly. Even if you just kill like one of your units, you're gonna you're most likely gonna get um, a bonus for killing that unit because the undead um, spawn pool is so yeah. small. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean if you want, I mean simply the pool is Cursed Pirate, Banshee, uh, Wraith, Grendel, Grave Stalker, Rakanoth, and Mordok, and the Vampire. So that's. Uh, Eight units, and of course, seven of them are pretty damn powerful. Yes, so you're almost always going to get um, a higher valued unit than you sacrifice. Exactly, yeah. Unless you're a cursed pirate, in that case, aren't you? Just hates you. Yeah, then, then uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah. Hit that menu button, folks, and you're going to be done. <laughs> But yeah, overall, reanimate, not that bad. I enjoy it. I want to try and get this card to be useful. I think it does have the potential to be. Okay, so the next card is Lich. Um, it is, again, a Vikings undead unit. I mean, like, it's it's good. It's good. It's not bad. Yeah, like, it, it, it is good. It has, it's 3-7. You're going to be able it's, it's like on that neutral plane, honestly. And that's what I think we're trying to get out here. It's not, it's not a bad card. I would say, though, that, like, you're... You know, if you, do you want to actually explain the card monger? Yeah, yeah, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's good. It's hard to play because you have to sacrifice a mage unit. Um, well, it's, yeah. it's hard to play if you have it straight in your deck. But if you summon it from either Maddie or from, um, Mordok, which is another card that from, in this expansion, um, or, or from, reanimate. yeah, or from reanimate, then it's definitely a very good draw because as soon as you get this card out in the field, it's, like very hard to kill, especially in early game. Also, it's got the same sets of Talibos plus an additional Frost Aura, so yes, it's doing more damage than a Talibos. Yes, depending on what it's fighting, so it's it's about it should be doing about five damage if you're unfortunate enough to have it alive after an attack. So that is pretty devastating, I would say. Yeah, de definitely very very devastating. And especially again, like you said, when played off a of Mordok, you never know when that thing could be. It actually could just plop around right in your castle. And now you have a three seven, Frost or two on your castle. So again, just his RNG, like where he can come from, it's insane. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where rat is, it's 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 a, it's a rat card, really. Like I, I it's a rat card. Where rat? What? 
but like yeah, more support. <laughs> ding ding ding. Yes, exactly what rats need. More support instead of actual. Best spawners, more support. Yes. Okay. Like. Mm, okay. This this card, this card kind of annoys me. I mean, like I I really like it. I honestly seriously like it. It's just that. It's a support card, and rats need Why spawn. Why is it in its own unit? That's what we're trying to get out of here, folks. Yes. Why does it have that transform? Yes. Like, the only the only cards that spawn rats is Rat King and Rat Infested Hovel. Right? Yeah, and pretty much usually rat decks are trying to run either bouncing those spawners to keep them alive or to reuse them, and support bard armories blacksmiths and now of course wear rats yes and what what i'm trying to say is that rats have all the support they need they just need cards that spawn the rats so that support can actually help <laughs> so like this card is very good if you get out in the field it's just that ha like half the time you don't draw a rat king like if you're playing a rat deck you know yeah, and I think I would additionally put in that it does have some pretty low health for Rampage, so yes. if you are lucky enough to get additional hits off of them, uh, I mean, I would say you find a way to keep its health somewhat in a stable level so you don't lose it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that is hard to do. Um, it's, a, it's, it's hard to have a health buff out on the field as well as drawing, like, Rat King in the same game. Here's Sharpshooter, it's a pirate card, 4 gold, epic, and it's 2-3, and only has 2 range at first, and it has 1 movement, but it has an ability called Awaken, gain plus 1 range. The Awaken range is a very, honestly, a very, very, very good power if, if you have the means to awaken this card multiple times, because um, having Dwarven Sharpshooter at only 2-3 to three range with um for four gold and it only has two attack like it may not be completely worth it you know um but if you're if you're using it if you're using it in an awakened deck and you, you play Sarah's when this guy is out or or you play right of awakening like having a unit that has four range or possibly even five range is huge like like that's it that is a huge um negative side for the opponent Next to the fact that you can get some dojo buffs with him, and it becomes even just crazy. Folks, becomes pretty crazy. Yeah, it's 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 very hard to remove him as soon as as soon as this guy awakens with dojo out. Um, yeah, I mean, just uh, the fact that you can reawaken, the fact that um, he's got that uh, range potential. I kind of lost the range for a minute there in my head, and the fact that he's actually the first dwarven pirate card that we have. We yes. actually don't have dwarf support in pirates, so that gives uh, uh, dwarven archetypes in general a bit more uh, areas to branch out into. But of course, that's just uh, me. I personally like myself some dwarf combat, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a dwarven sharpshooter for me, folks. Very, very good card, and I like to uh, hopefully see it in combat and in some pretty interesting awaken and dwarf decks in the near future. Here's Wraith. Wraith is 5 gold, neutral, rare, 4 movement, 2 attack, and 8 health, and has flying, and the ability is units damaged by Wraith will flee in terror. Now, I like this because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty good defensive card. If you're using this with, uh, for offense, like, what are you doing, honestly? Like, it, it, has, it, has, it has bad attack. Like, you're not going to get anywhere with this unless you're using, like, maybe Spirit Crash, you know? Or Mordok. If you yeah. spawn enough of Mordok, that thing's going to be already in the enemy base. So it's like, you're not going to spend time to retreat it. You're going to use it, man. You're going to use it. Yeah. But Wraith, Wraith is mainly for getting enemy units, like big enemy units, away from your castle. Um, Think about it as a like cheaper Villaroth. It won't kill the unit, but it'll definitely buy you some time. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and it's also very useful that it's flying, because that way... Uh, they can't really body block that that huge unit that they're trying to get to your castle. You can just fly right through other enemy units that may not be as threatening. And that forward movement definitely assists it. Exactly. It buys you at least one more turn to deal with that big unit before it reaches your castle. 
One of the okay. Here's the best card. Definitely, definitely the best if, card from this. If you were on the fence of buying this card, look at Mordok. Like honestly, Life Steal Four. Like that is a um, ability that they re put back into the game, which basically means every single time Mordok attacks, he heals back up for four. So and seeing his like health too, it's it's not like you're regenerating. More like around half his health every time he attacks. Yes, it's so. it's almost it's almost as annoying to deal with as Gromok, the Gorilla King. Yeah. He health wise. If not a little more because of his nasty ability, he, as you could see. Yeah. Not only life steal, but he also has a combo, which is summon a random undead unit. And like said before, like the the un, the undead the undead pool is very small, so you're almost always going to get a really, really, really good unit out of this. You can summon another Mordok, you can summon a Rakanoth, you can summon a Vampire, you can summon a Grendel or a Wraith, or like even like a Banshee is good. Itself. Yeah, exactly. And look at those tags at the bottom, folks. Undead, Dwarf, and Dinosaur, you have the potential to give this guy power from all three of those archetype supports. The mithril and weapons from dwarves, uh, from dwarves. The baby dino and dino nests from dinosaur. Uh, the witch doctor and I guess blacksmith off well, blacksmith global. But you get what I mean, folks. Like this guy can take some serious power. Yes, the, the eight gold is very very worth it for his stats already. And then if you if you're running undead, and then you're also running. Either dwarf or dinosaur. This guy's stats is gonna be out of the roof. But regardless, yeah, like like undead and dwarf. Like this stats is gonna be out of the roof when you play this. If you guys are on the fence about buying the bundle, I would say Mordok completes. You're getting three copies of him from the bundle. Three, along with every other card we've mentioned in this video. Exactly. That's pretty much that, that's a pretty good package. Dude. That's that's twenty one cards for six dollars basically, and yeah, so and like, like three of them are legendary. Out, Three of them are legendary, which is lit. So that is all the cards coming out for Call of the Grave. Call of the Grave is really cool. Um, it is kind of small, unfortunately. I was hoping for maybe ten cards, but seven cards is still really good. I still like that, personally. Um, and, of course, getting that uh, more content every t so often as compared to our previous updates, I would say... It just reinforces the fact that this could it, it could be some good time. We're gonna be able, we're gonna see some good time. Yes, you, you you should see a new small expansion like uh, maybe monthly or bi monthly. I think it's bi monthly. Okay, so um, <laughs> that's that's basically it, guys. Listen, subscribe. Okay, it helps a lot. And also subscribe to Red because he's also pretty freaking cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. And comment right. down below what you think of this mini expansion. Uh, tell me what your favorite card is out of this. Uh, do you like? And tell us if you're excited for more of these expansions. Yes, yes. I personally like the idea of a bunch of different kinds of expansions instead of like two big expansions with the same kind of theme. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I totally feel it, man. But that's gonna close it, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's a bit. So like I. I don't know why you're watching this video this long at this point. Like, Peace out. See you next video, guys. Um, white boy, white boy out. <laughs>